The T-80B is one of the best tanks in Gunner EPC for the pack forces. Unlike the older Soviet tanks, the T-80B has an advanced fire control system that will pretty much do most of the work. But it's also important to know how most of these work. In the short and quick guide, I'll do my best to explain this tank, some best practices, and what Gunner EPC has to offer with this tank. My name is Fan Fantasy, and I do cover tactical numbers of games like Gunner EPC, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe, as it will help to support this channel. To give you a brief history of this tank, the origin of this tank can be traced back to the T-64, with many variations and improvements coming from the T-64 tank itself. You'll notice that there are some visual similarities with both the T-64 and the T-80. The first concept tank, known as Object 219, was initially rejected due to its high fuel consumption. Due to changes in the leadership, it was later decided to mass produce them under the designation T-80 in 1976. One of the notable features of the T-80s would be its engines, the GDT-1000TF gas turbine, which was considered to be controversial because it used gas instead of diesel, which was considered to be costly. Regardless, the Soviets decided to go with it. Nonetheless, you notice the T-80 engine noise in the game. As a in response to Western ATGMs and better ammunition, the T-80 is well protected. Its turret has composite armor that has steel and quartz ceramic. Its armor is similar to the T-72A but much more heavier. By now you should know that the Soviets have pretty much went with the autoloader. The T-80's carousel autoloader was pretty much inherited from the T-64, also known as MZ, which I'm not going to try to say in Russian but basically means loading mechanism. Like the T-64 and the T-80B, the autoloader places the ammo vertically rather than horizontally like in the T-72. The T-80's autoloader is also capable of loading up a radio-guided missile. As for the T-80 that we have in Gunner PC, it is the T-80B, and it has the 2A46 125mm smoothbore cannon. The T-80B has the 1A33 fire control systems, featuring a laser rangefinder that you can use by pressing E. It's capable of leading targets, it has camp correction, a 2-axis sight stabilization, delta D, and continuous zoom, which you can use by zooming in and out with your mouse wheel. There are also sensors to detect wind and other weather factors. So looking at the gunner's sight, from the top, you have the range scales for manual mode. On the top left, you have the range scales for armored piercing rounds. In the middle is HE rounds, and on the right are range scales for heat rounds. The arrow tip is the aim point where you will use to laser target. By using the laser rangefinder, you will then be using the automatic mode for this tank. The line that goes up and down vertically are the coaxial machine gun ranges, which I'll talk about more in a bit, and on the right is the Stadia rangefinder. The bottom features a range meter, the green LED means that it is ready to fire, the letter is the ammo type that is indexed, and the red LED on means that your commander is overriding the turret. In the real world, it takes some time for the laser rangefinder to give you the numbers, but in Gunner PC, it's pretty much instant after you laser your target. In terms of the ammunition indicator, the B looking symbol is armor piercing rounds, K means heat, the O symbol is high explosive, and Y is the ATGM missile which will be featured later on. In automatic mode, you simply need to laser target and fire, and unlike the T-72, there is a ballistic computer that will calculate the lead on its own, which means you won't have to aim ahead of your target. However, to properly use the lead system, you will need to steadily keep track of your target by matching the speed to ensure that your shot will be accurate. Any sudden movements or quick firing without tracking will lead to a miss. In short, it's good to keep a steady track of a moving target for at least a second before firing your shot. The T-80 also features a manual mode that you can use. If for any reason your ballistic computer or rangefinder isn't working or damaged, the manual system allows you to continue fighting. As mentioned before, the manual ranges can be used, but don't worry, if you play with your hood on, you can keep track of the range by looking at the bottom left. Once you've set your desired range, use the horizontal line and align it with your target and fire. It may be a little confusing at first with the middle vertical line that goes up and down, but to see your correct range, you can either look at the range scale above or use the hood. The Stadia rangefinder is available to use. Simply align it with your target to get the correct range. So right now the M60 is about from the top to bottom about 2400 meters and we'll range our target to 2400 and fire. The T-80 coaxial machine gun isn't really connected to the fire control system so the vertical line in the middle is your range. If your infantry target is at a thousand meters you simply need to move up your sight with the line and align it with your target and fire. It's 
will be useful once infantry is out for gunner heat PC. Now for fighting in low light or nighttime settings, the T-80B is equipped with the TPN-349 night sights. It's almost similar to the BMP-2 gun sights as you can range up and down with it. And like with most Soviet tanks, there are IR spotlights that you can use, but using that may give away your position. However, the T-80B night sights is capable of passive mode, which means we'll use any available light sources such as the moon to illuminate your vision. To use the night vision, you simply need to press T. To use night sights, you'll have to manually range your targets, which will leave you at a disadvantage in terms of fighting at night. Furthermore, you cannot use your laser rangefinder while using or seeing with your night sights. If you do need to use your laser rangefinder, you need to go into your day sights to laser. If possible, make sure to call in your night illumination flares so that you can better laser your targets. You can also turn on the reticle lights to get a better contrast by pressing I. If in any case you're fighting in the night and you don't have any more flares, well, you can battle set your range to about a thousand meters and turn off your delta D and adjust your range from there. If you do need to adjust the sights, remember that the left side is for armor piercing rounds and on the right is machine gun. You can also use other rounds for the sights as well. But in my opinion though, make sure to use as much illumination flares to your advantage if you have them available. Like with any tank, positioning is key. Since Soviet tanks are low profile, make sure to use that to your advantage as you traverse through terrain. Your frontal armor is perhaps the strongest armor, so try your best to face towards the enemy tanks for better protection. You also do have smoke, so you can use that to obstruct your enemy's line of sight as you advance. Overall, the T-80B is one of the best tanks that is featured in Gunner Heat PC and for the pack forces. It has a pretty straightforward fire control system, but I do think it's important to learn what the gun sights and the symbols mean. And of course, once you master the T-80B, then you'll be a very effective killer in the battlefield. Hope you all find this helpful, and for the next part, I'm going to show you some gameplay with the T-80B, but I'm going to make it a little bit interesting. Alright, well, we're going to be doing a mission called Pushing Tin Part 1 of 2. This is one of the newer missions that came out for the T-80, and so I decided to have a bit of more of a challenge and do an, a nighttime operation. For us, our regiment will be conducting an advance down this valley, and our company has been assigned to clear the left flank of the advance. Enemy strength unknown, but there are M60A3s and M2 Bradleys. As for the friendlies, we do have two platoons of BMPs and one platoon of our T-80Bs, which is us, and we do have an MI2 uh, reconnaissance helicopter who will be doing reconnaissance ahead of us. And so we are to advance towards Objective Anton. Our two BMP tunes will be split off into points A and B, which are their support by fire positions, and we're to support them if they are ever to get in contact. So pretty straightforward here. It's a simple attack mission that we're going to be doing. So I'm going to pause the mission. So here we are, night time, and we are to capture Objective Anton. And to our right, which you can't really see because it's obstructed, but we do have our MI2 helicopter flying up to our right. And so what we're going to do now is make sure we are in a line formation. To be honest with you guys, I don't usually like doing nighttime missions because they look bad on YouTube. Uh, video quality wise so i'd rather do them in the day but i decided you know i want to do a little bit different so why not go for a nighttime mission just to spice things up and what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna dump our lead because i want to manually battle site a range to about a thousand meters especially at night and i'm gonna call in some preemptive artillery on the support by five positions as well as fixed wing, and we have contact on where A is at. I'm gonna call in the looms. We may not even use the, the nighttime sights if we call in our looms properly. And I do see shots being fired at towards our helicopter. Let's turn on our spotlights, our IR spotlights. And I do hear our cast coming in. see here all right there you go and see the settlement there is badly and firing out target target destroyed another one right there on our left lays and firing and target destroyed two Batleys down 
Alright, we'll keep scanning. And that's our our looms. And let's traverse down to the left. Get a little bit of a low ground here. And let's see our where our BMPs are at, because we actually do need them up here. And we are to move towards waypoint two. One of the things I wish we had in Gunnar PC was actual lines that we can draw and all that. Just like stoop east a little bit. Just to make things a little more clear. And scan to our left. And so what we're going to do is we're going to move towards the south side and attack towards Objective Anton. We're going to make sure that our BMPs are okay. And looks like shots to our left. Yep, we got... Contact to our left, looks like tanks. Yep, I do see the silhouette and firing out. Target destroyed. That's an M60. And looks like they're stuck behind him. I can't even get a good shot. Let's see, he might go to the left. Is that him right there? We'll fire that. I think that's them right there. Oh, nope, there's one behind. And I just heard our helicopter going down, so... Oh, there he is, to the right. Oop, firing out. And target destroyed. Nice. Okay, so that's three tanks. I'm not sure if there's a fourth one, but we'll keep our eyes on there. So that's three tanks down. Looks like we do have a tank spotted right here, too, so... As we're approaching, I'm going to call in fixed wing support, and we'll wait for the RD. See how we're doing. So far, we haven't lost our BMPs, which is good. What I'm going to do is make sure we dump our lead, take out Delta D, because we might have to do our night sights here. But we're not much in that town, except for that destroyed... Bradley. And those are BMPs. Oh, shots. Alright. Looks like we got tanks and one on the left destroyed already. Oh, that's really close. And firing. Ooh, okay. That's two tanks destroyed. That's something right there. What is that? That is a Bradley and firing out. Hey. Okay. And target. Ooh. One of our tanks got a hit. Second badly right there to the left. Firing now. That might be a little short. Oh, no. We actually got him. Nice. Wow. Okay. So we lost one of our tanks. But we keep going. Don't think I see much from here. Yeah. Look at that. M60. Perhaps we'll, we'll roast some marshmallows right after this. Hopefully, if we make it out alive. But it's nice to see these tanks burning. And not us, except for our, our T-80. Hopefully, our crew survives. But we'll see after that. Alright, so what we'll do is we'll call an RD on the objective before we advance. And we'll call in smoke to block off this area here. Because they might be coming from here as well too, to reinforce their position so we'll call in smoke to obscure our attack and we'll call in another loom to brighten up that area there too all right so looms are out and we're pounding the objective quick look at what we got here oh spawning something traversing left tank and we'll laze it and firing now target yep and nope he's still up once more oh shoot one of our tanks took a hit tank to our right oh he's spawning us and uh hopefully we got him oh shoot okay 
make sure we face our frontal armor towards him and firing. Oh, a little over. I think I moved. Firing him. I think that tank to our left is still up. Where is he? Keep moving towards the objective. Yep, we've captured it. The I think that's it. Oh no, he's still up. Oh my goodness, he fired right at him. All right, target destroyed. Oh, that's a little bit misleading. We captured it, but we didn't clear it. So, all right. So those are the two tanks that we just destroyed, and it looks like there was a tank there. And I do see our BMPs moving up towards the objective too, which is nice. All right, not bad. We actually lost one of our tanks, and they lost second platoon lost one BMP. And uh, I'd say we're still an effective fighting force here. So we'll. We'll end our attack and we'll go into the after action review. All right, so crew lost. We only lost two crew and equipment lost three. Three equipment. I thought we lost two equipment and rather than three, but um, yeah, we were effective here. Let's take a look at what's going on here. All right, so the first thing that we saw with their day sights with the through the loom was this bad lead right here, which we were able to take out. And the second one was on this tree line right here, managed to hit him directly and that basically one shot, one kill. And then we saw the incoming platoon of the M60 A3s moving up in the line. Yeah, so they were kind of stuck uh, behind each other once we destroyed the first tank. So it looks like our helicopter took a hit from the M60s that were attacking us, which is kind of weird when we were more of an immediate threat. So I guess we're lucky there. So we managed to hit the last M60 that was moving up to attack us. And yep, we sent in one more round directly towards the tank right here. Uh, as we were moving towards the south side, our BMPs were engaging the M60s, which was really effective here. They used their conquers to destroy one. They responded by destroying our, one of our BMPs. Oh, so they managed to take out a second one with their conquerors right here. I think I sent in one round as well, too, at the same time. And then we were engaging the Bradleys. They were very difficult to see from this point on here, right here. But they managed to send one toe and it destroyed our wingman T-80B right here. I think, let's see. Yeah, I think our crew would have survived this. They would have bailed out. And then right here, we uh, battle sight and engaged the Bradleys right here. So as we, were engaged, as we were moving towards the objective through the south side, we took out this M60 right here. Took a few shots to finish them off. And then we took a hit, but wow, look at that. Not much to us, actually. They, they managed to hit us, but we actually survived that. Pretty strong armor right here. And then our wingmen also took a hit too. Looks like he was okay, but the gunners was injured slightly a bit. So it says right here on the other tank that the gunner's left leg was hit. You know, he took a saber round to the knee, I guess. And then once again, we uh, took a hit right here, but not much damage. Wow, very strong armor right here, as you can see. So yeah, I'm wondering about the last tank. So it looks like our BMP, oh wow, took him with the Conquerors about 86 meters away. Yeah, took him out right there. Wow, that's very effective. And yeah, he didn't even see the BMPs moving. But yeah, nice job on the BMPs. And then last but not least, as we were moving up to just hold on to the objective, this tank was still alive and we finished him off. So that's that was pretty much it. Okay, right, so that's pretty much it for this mission. And I hope you guys enjoyed the whole video that showed you guys about the T-80B. Short, the T-80B is capable of fighting in the night. A lot better than the older Soviet tanks for sure. And if you time your looms correctly, then you can definitely get a good shot against the US forces who have thermals. But thankfully, our T-80 armor is quite strong for its time. So we managed to survive quite a few rounds, as you can see here. 
For a while, this was a good introduction mission to the T-80B. I definitely encourage you guys to try it out in nighttime as much as it is effective in the daytime. And that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to hit that like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to stay up to date. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.